The modern state of stealth games is not what it used to be. Genre titans like Metal Gear, Thief, and Dishonored have laid dormant for years, and series like Assassin's Creed have all but abandoned their stealth roots. One of these seemingly forgotten series is Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. I wouldn't be surprised if more people recognize Sam Fisher from Rainbow Six Siege than they do from his own series. It's been almost 10 years since the last installment, so we're long overdue for the next one. I think some of these games are the pinnacle of the stealth genre and extremely underrated. Today, I'm going to be ranking every Splinter Cell game. Last at number 7, I have Splinter Cell Essentials. Released for the PSP back in 2006, Essentials sees Sam recalling past missions he's been on. This is the only handheld mainline game in the series, and yeah, there's a reason for that. In the grand scheme of the Splinter Cell timeline, this game feels inconsequential at best. Along with new levels, we also have missions from past games sprinkled in that we can play. It is kind of a neat gimmick playing a Splinter Cell game on a handheld, but that's where the game suffers the most. For those of you who aren't familiar with the PSP, the handheld only had one analog stick. Not the most ideal setup for 3D games at all. Even though they did the best with what they had, the controls are really, really bad. Essentials really feels like a mix of Splinter Cell assets tossed together to appeal to the large handheld market at the time. This is really the only game in the series that I don't recommend going back to. Next at number 6, I have Splinter Cell Conviction. Now this isn't a bad game, far from it actually. It's just not a good Splinter Cell game. If you're looking for a traditional Splinter Cell game, this isn't it. There's a much smaller focus on stealth, instead focusing on the third person shooting mechanics. The game released back in 2010, a time where grey tinted edgy third person shooters were a dime a dozen. Unfortunately, Conviction suffers from a lot of the same drawbacks and cliches of these games. If it wasn't for the voice of the legendary Michael Ironside, Fisher would be almost unrecognizable here. Rather than having a deep geopolitical story that the series is known for, the plot is a generic revenge tale. Think a straight to video version of Taken. So we've talked about the story, but how about the gameplay? Conviction is like if John Wick and Max Payne had a baby. The shooting is amazing, the best in the series. The new gameplay gimmick, Mark and Execute, is a great addition and really makes you feel like a badass. Even though all this is great, it's just not Splinter Cell. I still think it's worth giving a try, it is a good game, there's a reason it's considered the black sheep of the series. At number 5, I have Splinter Cell Double Agent. So funny thing about this game, there are two versions of Double Agent that are almost completely different games. The last generation consoles plus the Wii got its own version that's actually well received, but I'm only going to be including the then current gen version of the game. For me, Double Agent is where the series jumped the shark. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the game and all, but it has its noticeable flaws. The biggest addition of this game is the trust meter. As the name implies, you're a double agent going undercover in a terrorist group. You have to play both sides without burning bridges with either one. It's actually really fun sneaking around and going undercover. The story starts out with an awesome mission in Iceland and boom, dead daughter. Oh yeah, Sam has a daughter. I mean, he had a daughter. Sam is then given the privilege of getting sent to prison to join the terrorist group known as John Brown's Army, or the JBA. The story is fine, I guess. It serves its purpose and allows for some cool levels and set pieces. The game is more action-focused than the past entries, which was a sign of what was to come. Don't get me wrong, it is a stealth game at its core, but there is way more forced action scenes than ever before. All in all, Double Agent does a lot right, but also has many glaring issues and marked the start of the decline in the series. At number 4, I have Splinter Cell Blacklist. Most recent game in the series, Blacklist acted as somewhat of a return to form for the series. There's a much heavier focus on stealth compared to Conviction, with the option of going loud still there for those who want it. The story and level design is top notch, and the controls are tuned to perfection. This game really feels like a modern, at the time at least, continuation of the original games. As for the negatives, we have to talk about Sam Fisher. This is the first and only game to not have Michael Ironside reprising his role as Sam. Instead, he's played by the talented Eric Johnson. Now at the time, Ironside was fighting cancer, so I fully understand and support why he wouldn't come back for this game. Eric Johnson does a fine job, but he just doesn't feel like Sam for me. For one, Sam is supposed to be in his 50s, yet he sounds and acts like he's 20 years younger. Gone are the calm, sarcastic remarks from the previous games. Instead, this Sam feels more like any generic military protagonist we've seen a million times before. I think it would have been best if Sam sat this game out entirely and we played as a new agent. I also didn't like the progression system in this game. Certain actions you do during missions reward you with cash. This cash in turn can be spent on upgrades ranging from better night vision to drones. This was just an unnecessary change in my opinion. If you've never played any of the Splinter Cell games and you're looking for one to jump into, I think you should try Blacklist. Being the most recent game in the series, it feels the most modern and beginner friendly. At number 3, I have Pandora Tomorrow. For some reason, Ubisoft does not want you to play this game. It's the only game aside from Essentials to not be on Steam or the Ubisoft store. Essentials I can understand with it being a handheld game, but this is a mainline entry and one of the most acclaimed ones at that. The game was made by Ubisoft Shanghai instead of Montreal, so maybe that's why they refused to sell it. 
If you're looking for the easiest way to play this game, buy an Xbox copy for like 10 bucks and play it via backwards compatibility. All that aside, this game is incredible. The missions have a much bigger variety from the first game. The train mission is one of my favorite missions in the whole entire series. The gameplay is tight and fluid, and the stealth is so amazing. Nothing feels better than cutting all the lights and sneaking around without a trace. The game was also the first in the series to feature the Spies vs Mercs multiplayer mode. Now most of these games were before my time, so I never got the chance to play them when the servers were still up. That being said, there's a reason this mode is so beloved. It's everything a multiplayer add-on should be, and more. My main issues with the game are the technical issues. There's a noticeable lack of polish compared to the Montreal games. There are times where someone hears or sees me, even when I know I'm completely hidden. This game is amazing, one of the best, but unfortunately, there are two more games in the series that are just better. Number two is where the series began, the original Splinter Cell. Released over 20 years ago, this game still holds up extremely well. Everything we know about the series originated from this game. The game's tagline, Stealth Action Redefined, could not have been more true. The lighting in this game was way ahead of its time. It looks amazing. Sam Fisher is an excellent protagonist. He's skilled and badass, but he's also sarcastic and has a good sense of humor. The story is what you'd expect from a Tom Clancy game, with geopolitics and espionage and all that. The mission layouts are pretty linear compared to what the series would become later on, but I can't really fault this game on that. What I can fault the game on, however, are the forced action segments. While there are only a few of these in the game, they are really unenjoyable. The controls just aren't designed for heavy gunplay. Speaking of gunplay, there's this weird bullet deviation where you can have a headshot perfectly lined up, but through some act of god, the bullet curves and completely misses. Whenever this happens and the whole compound you're storming gets alerted, it will make you want to punch a hole through your monitor. The gameplay has aged the most out of any of the other games, but that's to be expected. If you're a fan of the series, you need to give this one a try. I think you'll be surprised with how much you enjoy it. Let's face it, anyone who's familiar with the series already knows what my number one is. Chaos Theory isn't just the best game in the series, it's one of the best games of all time. I've replayed this game at least 20 times now, yet the game has never gotten old. Released all the way back in 2005, this game could easily pass for a mid-gen PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 game. Every level is handcrafted with more detail than most games have now. Gameplay-wise, the game plays like a dream. It took everything learned from the past two games and perfected it. While the previous games had one, maybe two routes you could go through to complete a mission, Chaos Theory seemingly has an endless amount of ways to complete a level. Sam is at his most deadly here, with new additions such as a knife and more takeout options. The story is amazing as well, the best in the series. I won't go into too much detail for those who haven't played it, but there are some intense cinematic moments in here. The game also has a co-op campaign, which is amazing and actually ties back into the main story. Also, if you were talking to your friend over your headset, the game would pick up the volume of your voice and reflect that in the game. That means the enemies could hear you and your buddy speaking. As you can imagine, this led to some really intense moments. Let me remind you, this is a game from 2005. If you guys know of any other game that has a feature like this, let me know in the comments because I genuinely can't think of one. Spies vs Mercs also made another appearance, with a few improvements from Pandora Tomorrow, such as an increased player count. I could easily sit here and gush about this game for hours, but to save everyone's time, I'll wrap it up. If you're a fan of the stealth genre, or just great games in general, give this game a shot. Alright, there it is. Did you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. This was a really fun list to make, so if you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. I think that's all for me, so have a good day.